What's up guys, this is RBG bringing you another breakdown video on Marvel's Avengers. It's been a few days since the official gameplay trailer was released and a lot of you have been asking me if I could give my thoughts on it, so we're going to do that today. I just want to say that I wasn't necessarily blown away by what I saw because it wasn't my initial reaction to the trailer. And this isn't taking anything away from the hard work Crystal Dynamics has put into the project because the visuals look amazing. People go on and on about how Marvel Spider-Man destroys his game in all aspects, but the level of detail in this game, like the lighting and particle effects, supersedes Marvel Spider-Man in my opinion. So yeah, there are many things that set both titles apart from one another. But the reason why I wasn't really jumping for joy over the official release gameplay trailer was because we've already seen it months ago. We saw leaked footage during E3, which if I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really watch in full because it looked like it was filmed on a Game Boy Color, and during San Diego Comic Con, we got an even better look at the leaked footage that pretty much reassured me that Marvel's Avengers would be a solid game. Judging by the official trailer, it looks like they've improved on things we saw in the leaked videos like the frames, and you obviously notice that some of the characters like Black Widow and Thor have been improving drastically in the facial department since the earlier trailer. Which is a good thing, because it's as I said, the developers are at least willing to take some of the complaints into consideration, so the game seems to be coming along fine. Now I'm not going to talk about all the changes made to the game, because I want to save that topic for a later video. We're going to mainly discuss the gameplay and production value that was displayed. Right off the bat, I want to defend this game because I've seen comments talking about how it looks uninspired and uses elements from other titles that have come before it. One of the main ones being Thor's gameplay that's widely compared to God of War 2018's gameplay. This has been one of the funniest comparisons because I don't think those who've mentioned this are even aware that both titles were worked on by the same guy. That guy being Vincent Napoli, who was the lead combat designer for God of War and one of the geniuses behind the Leviathan axe mechanics. You can tell that a lot of what he's learned from that game has been integrated into Thor's Mjolnir combat, except it's amped up to awesome cartoony levels where you're able to send enemies flying into the air. Not to mention that if you weren't a fan of Kratos' somewhat bolted down and anti-jumping combat, then I think you're gonna absolutely get a kick out of Thor's, because it looks like he's gonna have ground and aerial combos. Every move looks impactful and I particularly like some of the combos that can start off on the ground and transition into the air. You have light attacks that basically involve you performing standing combos, and you have your heavy attacks that revolve around launchers and ground pounds. Now while I think the combat for Thor looks great, I do have to bring up a complaint that seems universal, and that's the sound effects. They are a little underwhelming and don't give off the feeling that you're pulverizing someone with Uru Metal, and this is something that carries on to the other characters. I'm not saying that they need to ask Marvel Studios to lend them sound effects from their audio library, but they gotta at least try to mimic those iconic sounds. I'd even go so far as to say the sound effects for punches needs to be dialed up a little more. Another thing that I like to harp on is the dialogue. It varies from serious to downright hokey. While I don't necessarily see this affecting my experience in the long run, I do see it pushing some of the adult audience away. Like you hear Thor saying things like, lucky for you I am mighty, which is something he'd say in some of the Marvel films, but I'm pretty sure he'd say it during a more comedic scene that warrants it. But the Avengers are saying it during serious moments and they kind of seem like they're trying hard to sound like their cinematic counterparts. I'm hoping the writers work on this before the game releases. But anyway, something that I noticed is that the trailer showcased that each Avenger will have three special attacks. If you look down to the lower right hand corner of the screen, you see these three icons. I noticed that the player pressed L1, Thor would hover in the air, charge up energy, and release lightning throughout the area. And it looks like it has lasting effects, because after Thor performs it, you still see lightning hitting the ground. I'm guessing that when you press R1 that you perform an even more powerful attack. We see Thor spinning his hammer to create little whirlwinds that cause the enemies to hover in the air, and he shoots out this electric energy blast from his hammer to finish him off. It looks like this game's combat is going to be very similar to Marvel Spider-Man in the way you defeat baddies, because if you notice, once you deal the finishing blow to the remaining enemies, the camera slows down to show how devastating the move is. Which is dope. Like, I can see this looking even more awesome when you're fighting alongside the other Avengers members. It's essentially going to look like a giant splash page come to life. But moving on, let's talk about Iron Man's gameplay, because this is something that I was the most concerned about. Because if we're gonna be honest, he's one of those characters whose combat hasn't really been fully realized outside of a few games. 
I believe the best representation he's gotten has been in the Lego Marvel games, which I find funny because those are more lighthearted portrayals of the characters that don't really take themselves seriously. Like, they did a lot of stuff correctly with those games. They had everything like his pulsar blast and flight mechanics down to a T. I believe that if there was any game Crystal Dynamics should borrow from in terms of Iron Man's mechanics, it should absolutely be Lego Marvel Heroes. And it kinda looks like they did with some of the moves, but it also looks like they could've taken some inspiration from Anthem's Joust gameplay. As you can see, it looks like a good mixture of both games. The flying looks like it's a lot more fluid than it was in Iron Man's movie tie-in games, and it doesn't look like it's gonna give me a headache. Then again, this could have been a more scripted section that's essentially on rails and only requires you to shoot and move from side to side to avoid incoming blasts. If you notice, it doesn't really look like you have to do much until you reach the actual combat section of Iron Man's mission. I'm hoping that I'm wrong because I would absolutely love to have full control of Iron Man and fly around open areas freely if I want to. And I think I will, because the devs have already said that the A-Day mission is basically a tutorial that gives you an idea of how the characters will play. But anyways, it looks like Iron Man is going to be one of the flashiest Avengers in terms of combat, which is made apparent with the amount of posing he does when blasting enemies. And he's going to be very similar to Thor since he can perform ground and aerial combos. It looks like when you're shooting enemies while grounded, it'll instantly lock onto whoever is close, or it'll decide based on the angle in which you shoot. But I could be wrong. I kind of wish they could have shown some close quarters melee combat, like I'm sure Iron Man can perform punching or kicking attacks. It's gonna be weird if he can only shoot nearby enemies, so that's something they should include if they haven't already. When it comes to his aerial combat, he has a very similar hover to Thor, except you have to aim to hit someone when they're far away. It looks like you can perform light blast attacks or hold the button to perform a more powerful blast. You seem to have more control in flight mode since you can choose to drift wherever you please and then sway to dodge incoming attacks. Something that I found funny is that unlike Thor, Iron Man doesn't have access to two special attacks, or at least not yet. Instead, he only has his Unibeam attack available and it looks amazing, man. This game absolutely nails the physics of all the Avengers attacks, and I love how the environmental destruction further emphasizes how devastating each special attack is. Once again, the only thing I have to complain about is how lackluster the sound design is. Like, the poster blasts don't sound like something that packs a punch. I want to hear them hum as they charge up like in the movies, and I need to hear robotic sound effects when Iron Man moves and performs certain attacks. I'm just saying. Now the next one is probably the best part of the gameplay trailer, like I think it's safe to say that this character has had the most work done, because it was obviously going to take a lot of work to bring his gameplay to life. Not to mention that he already has one of the most popular superhero games out of the entire roster, and that's the Hulk. This is a character whose gameplay looks the most promising out of the bunch, especially since the devs have gone on record about the skill tree and how this is only a fraction of what the characters have to offer. So this could potentially be a modern day Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction, except it's dialed up to 11. Speaking of Ultimate Destruction, I noticed some complaints saying that the green glow from Hulk's attacks is too cartoony. But that's kind of been a thing in some of the earlier games like the one I mentioned. I think the glow is going to be an indication of how angry he gets and he'll only glow more bright as he gets stronger. The brighter the glow, the more stronger his attack gets. Like in the comics, he's constantly creating and radiating gamma energy, so he's basically a gamma battery so to speak. But anyways, regarding his gameplay, the Hulk seems to have mostly grapple attacks when it comes to smaller enemies. Like you can perform different variations of grabs that range from slams to stumps. I'm not sure if that's something that changes depending on the enemy type, but it looks like it will be because I don't see the Hulk flat out punching a small soldier. The most we see him do is punch the ground or break off a piece of the ground to slam it onto one of the enemies. His other gameplay looks like it's going to consist of him being a destructive freight train that annihilates everything in its path. Many of you mentioned that the Hulk is relatively slow when he runs, but I think his speed will be something that we'll be able to level up later in the game. That's something that I don't think the MCU movies have really elaborated on. Hulk's dynamic durability and superhuman speed. They give you an idea of how far he can jump, but they don't really show you how he can essentially increase in velocity when given enough momentum. That's something that was displayed brilliantly in Hulk Ultimate Destruction, so I have my fingers crossed that it's in this game as well. But anyways, as you can see, they have the long distance jumps down, and if you notice, they have the neat little visual cues that give you a hint on what you can jump on or off of, like the scrapes on the walls. Every time Hulk gets ready to jump, you see these red little platforms that are creatively placed there to look immersive. Like it could be the bottom of a truck or a random steel panel, it all looks seamless. And this is something you'll also notice with the Black Widow, because you see those same red platforms when she's jumping. 
Now, of course, the demo doesn't tell you that because the developers are still going for that cinematic look, but I'm pretty sure they'll have little hints. As a matter of fact, I think the heads up display that we see in this demo is nothing more than a placeholder that will most likely be changed in the final build of the game. Because it looks kind of basic and I feel it needs to have more unique health bars tailored to each Avenger. Like I think Hulk should have a green gamma infused bar instead of a white one, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see what they do with that. Anyways, along with the leaps you also have wall jumps that I'm hoping can eventually level up to wall runs. And for Hulk's super move, he has the strong gamma clap that'll miss a huge shockwave. And this move is activated when you click the little circular icon in the middle of the L1 and the R1 special attacks. It looks like that'll be the strongest out of all the specials since the icon is bigger than the other two. But let's move on to Captain America's combat. His gameplay is very reminiscent of the Arkham games as well as his movie tie-in game, Captain America Super Soldier, which if we're gonna be honest was also an Arkham clone in some ways. But that game did a lot of things right and is probably the most underrated movie tie-in game out there. If you remember in one of my earlier videos, I said if there's any game the developers should take notes from, it would be that one. Because it had a lot of potential that wasn't able to shine through due to the lack of time needed to make it. Which is something that hinders a lot of movie tie-in games. But now that we're getting Captain America gameplay that's being developed on a AAA level, we're gonna get to see what he really can do. Right off the bat, you notice some visual cues going on with his shield, like his arm glows red when he throws it. This looks like it could be a temporary power up because it activates as soon as you perform Cap's R1 special, but then again it could just be an effect to look flashy, because it doesn't last long. I'm thinking it could glow red when you hold the attack button since you sort of see that during combos. For quicker melee attacks it glows white. You see him use close quarters combat solid snake style to take out some of the baddies, and the attacks are as you'd expect very impactful. Like you can tell that Crystal Dynamics has been taking notes from movies like The Winter Soldier when developing his moveset. If anything, Cap's gonna be a very defensive character because he has his shield up a lot and it looks like he's waiting for any move that allows him to counter it. Which you see in this one move that looks like it could possibly be activated by pressing either L3 or R3 because you see a quick flash of a button prompt. I wouldn't be surprised if this turns out to be the case because that was something that was heavily used in the Super Soldier game I mentioned earlier. I really wish they could have at least shown button prompts for some of the other moves because some of these have to be critical finishes man. Like Captain America was pulling off some insane stuff to take out some of the soldiers. Like this one where you see him throw the shield and kick it back out when it comes back to him and he punches his shield to cause a shockwave. You know stuff like that isn't going to be performed by simply pressing a button. This has me thinking that there will be an additional meter added that builds up based on your combos. Speaking of combos, they should really consider adding a hit counter to motivate players to stitch attacks together. But anyways, similar to the Hulk, Cap has a super powered attack that allows him to completely push back enemies in the area. And when you pull this off, you can see that the player had to press L1 and R1 simultaneously to perform the move. He doesn't use all of the special moves, but he does have all three available, which makes sense considering he's probably going to be the most balanced character on the roster, so yeah. Now when it comes to the Black Widow's gameplay, I think it looks good, but it can be better. I think it's safe to say that her gameplay was the boss battle since Taskmaster is the last one you face off against. I feel like this fight should have more going on because it needs to deliver a first grade impression and in some areas it does, like when Black Widow is running to jump off the bridge it looks completely cinematic even though you can tell that that portion is completely playable. Some fans had an issue with the quick time portion but if you're going to deduct points off the demo because of the QTEs then you gotta do the same with Marvel Spider-Man because if I recall correctly E3 2017's demo of that game also had quick time events at the tail end of its presentation. I'm just saying. But anyways, this sequence looks absolutely breathtaking. Like you can see how well thought out it is because of all the chaos that's happening around you. If you pay close attention as Black Widow is flying on Taskmaster's back, you'll notice each Avenger playing a role in saving civilians and keeping the bridge from completely collapsing. This shows that there are more moments like this to come and it's only gonna get even more epic. But yeah, I say that Black Widow's gameplay is cool but it's missing something. Taskmaster's animations are a little limited, like when he gets hit he barely staggers and his attack patterns were very predictable. But then again, this is a tutorial so I shouldn't expect too much. Besides that, I wanted to quickly harp on some of the stuff we didn't see at the Gamescom panel, 
like the extra stages that haven't been shown to the general public along with some of the other enemy types. As you can see, the gameplay is definitely going to have more flash than it does in the official A-Day trailer. And I like it, but I think they should tone it down a little because it looks too arcadey for my taste. Like the green aura that swirls around the character in which I'm guessing happens when you absorb health or gain XP, that effect looks a little too funky and it takes away from the realistic vibe they're going for. It looks better when it's on the Hulk since it plays to that gamma radiation glow I talked about earlier, but it doesn't look right on other characters like Captain America or the Black Widow. But besides that, you can see that there are going to be other enemy types such as robots, and it's actually been confirmed that the tech corporation better known as AIM is in fact the main baddies that you'll be going up against. So I was dead on in the theory department with that one. But anyways, I think it's time that I bring the video to a close and leave the rest of the breakdown to you guys. What did you think about the A-Day gameplay trailer? Did you notice anything that I may have missed? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media outlets with all your friends and followers. Sharing really makes a difference. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another breakdown video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.